story time with Miss Sophie is another book, to, especially for the moms or to celebrate moms. But this is actually a whole family story. Uh, the title is In Mama's Kitchen. First in line, seems like everything good that happens in my house happens in my mama's kitchen. Like the day Nadine burst in waving a letter over her head. I got it, she yelled. I got it. What? I shouted back. What did you get? Nadine held the letter over her heart and closed her eyes. She read the whole thing without even looking at it. Dear Miss Jeffries, I am pleased to inform you that you have been accepted to our university on a four-year music scholarship. We did a dance around Nadine, Mama and Daddy hugged each other real tight. Then Nadine got out her clarinet and played Daddy's favorite song this little light of mine. My daddy sang a, and made a made up song about Nadine being the first in our family to go to college. This little daughter of mine, first in the family line, this little daughter of mine, she made it to in it to college time. This little daughter of mine, first to be in line, going to college, going to college, see her shine. I felt so proud. I stood on a chair and saluted her. The wedding. My friend Naomi made all the plans. We held Emma's wedding in the sunniest part of Mama's kitchen, right under the window. We marched her down the aisle between Mama's African violets. J Janie was supposed to be the groom, but she squirmed and meowed and wiggled out of her wedding clothes. Then she hid behind the stove. We had the reception anyway, tea cakes and cold butter, cold, ice cold buttermilk. The groom came back when she saw the buttermilk. Talking pots. On the Saturday, Mama, on the Saturday, Mama and her sisters do talking pots. I close, I stay close by Aunt Katie, Aunt Gloria, and Aunt L L Ludy always arrive together. Each one is carrying her biggest s stewing pot in one arm and shopping bags in the other. The bags Aunt Ludy carries are full of vegetables. Aunt Gloria's bags are filled with meats and sausages and always one odd-shaped package on top. We all know what's inside it, the biggest soup bone in town. Aunt Katie's bags hold extra cutting boards, knives, vegetable peelers, bowls, and spoons. She pulls them out. Then she holds up Grand Lee's metal coffee pot. I'll make the coffee. In moments, every hand is busy. Nadine and Mama are washing vegetables when Mama begins to hum a melody that has no words. Then Aunt Ludy holds her in deep, low tones, joins her in deep, low tones. Aunt Katie, Aunt Glory, and Aunt Gloria chime in with high-pitched harmony. The air is full of humming. Their hands are flying. I think they cook like hummingbirds. Just as easy as the music started, it turns to talk. Remember the time when you told me the 
insides of the human smelled like fresh pineapple? Aunt Ludie asks as carrot peelings fly into, into her bag. I got laughed right out of seventh grade science class that day. Mem remember how mama always bragged about the way I chop onions? Uh, uh, says Aunt Gloria as her knife cut chunks on the cutting board. Always mince so nice and fine and never a tear, she laughs, shaking her head. How about the time you made an Easter dress on the sewing machine, Nell? Aunt Katie, seeing tomatoes, says, seeding tomatoes, says to Mama. Not one of you had the heart to tell me the hem was four inches longer in the back than in the front. I couldn't figure out why Reverend Taylor looked at me so funny when he shook my hand. All day the kitchen was busy and full of full and cozy. Even the African violets are blooming just like my aunt's. Great Aunt Caroline. When Great Aunt Caroline comes to spend her 95th birthday with us, Daddy was glad. I wasn't. Why do we always have to be so quiet around Aunt, Aunt Car Great Aunt Caroline? I ask Mama. She's very old, Mama says. That didn't seem like a very good reason to me. Great Aunt Caroline wasn't used to cats, so Jeannie had to sleep in the basement. Great Aunt Caroline wasn't used to children underfoot, so Naomi couldn't come over. And Great Aunt Caroline always sat in my chair and called it her chair. She was still sitting there while I clear, cleared the table one morning. Henry, her her walking stick rested on her lap. I figured she was watching to make sure I did a good job, but by the time I finished, her eyes were closed. She had, she sat completely still. I didn't, it didn't look like she was even breathing. Had she died? I held my breath as I leaned over to look at her face. Suddenly, she opened one eye, just like that. Boo! She shouted, gotcha! I, I made you look, ha, ha, ha! Later, when we went for a walk, she called me her walking out. She called me walking out to the backyard friend. Janie's apples. Every October, Mama makes crab apple jelly. I wash the apples, Nadine peels them, Mama cooks them, and we all fill the jars. It gets pretty busy, so usually Janie hides behind the stove. Usually, but not this time. This time, she marched into the middle and of the kitchen and jumped on top of the basket of apples. Mama shooed her, but she wouldn't let, she wouldn't get down. I put her on the floor, but she jumped right back up and rolled around. Shoo, Janie, I scolded. She batted an apple, then another and another. I think she thought the apples were mice. Just as I reached down to pick her up again, she batted one mouse too many. The basket fell over. The apples came crashing down around her. Apples rolled all over the floor. I tripped and fell on top of Janie. Janie howled. Mama dropped a pot of water. Janie screamed and grabbed for the 
I mean, Nadine screamed and grabbed for the mop. By then, Janie was frantic. She ran around the kitchen, but she kept running into apple baskets. She knocked over every single one. Then she slid through the puddle of water and crashed into the wall. Just then, we heard Daddy at the door. Jeannie scrambled to her feet, let out a wild meow, and flew outside right between his legs. He started after her. Then she start, started a stared at the mess in the kitchen. Finally, he looked at the three of us. Cock get got everyone's cat got everyone's tongue, he asked, and we all burst out laughing. Corn pudding time. Just most of the time we say the kitchen is mama's, but when daddy makes corn pudding, it belongs to just him. At the first crackle of the falling leaves, he announces, it's getting to be corn pudding time. As soon as the first crop fro first frost covers the ground, he grabs his, he rubs his hands together and sniffs the air. Mmm, he says, I can almost smell the corn pudding cooking up right now. By the time the pumpkins have all become sagging jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkin pie, Daddy has taken over the kitchen. Watching Daddy make the corn pudding is a lot better than actually eating it. While he turns the handle of Mama's old-fashioned egg beater, he sings La Cucaracha and dances the cha-cha, dances the cha-cha. While he sifts and stirs, measures and mixes, pours and pinches, he sings and dances the tango right across the kitchen floor. Mmm, he says as he slides the corn pudding into the oven. This is going to be the best one yet. Then he picks me up and we twirl and swirl around the room. Corn pudding has never been a favorite dessert of mine. But when Daddy presents it at the dinner table wearing that smile of his and humming, Glory Hallelujah! having to eat it is worth it. Winter and the Grand Lee. In winter, when I come home from school, the warm kitchen fogs, the warm kitchen fogs the windows. I hug mama from behind and she says, hello, sweet potato pie. How was your school day? Then she drops a taste of peach cobbler into my mouth and peach juice dribbles down my chin. Stand close to Grand Lee and, war and warm the shivers off, she tells me. Then we talk about my day while she stirs a pot of greens and turns the frying chicken and mixes a bowl of cornbread batter. Chum, 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 chum. Mama's wooden spoon scrapes against the bowl, but before she can put the cornbread into the kitchen, she jiggles and shakes the door handle. I don't think I'll remember Daddy. I mean, I'll remind Daddy that the handle is still broken, she says. I smile. Grand Lee was Mama's mama's stove, and she doesn't want a new, new one. Neither do I. Nighttime serenades. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I wake up. When the house is dark and quiet, I can count the ticks of the clock. 
494. I go into the kitchen for something to eat. Sometimes Daddy and Jeannie are already there. We sit and snack together on whatever we like. Sometimes we make sandwiches out of leftovers and have ice cream and cookies. We giggle and munch and try not to wake the others. We talk in whispers and make big gestures, but Daddy isn't all that good at being quiet. Clang, bang, a lid falls on the floor. Soon Mama and Nadine are in the kitchen too, and Daddy doesn't have to whisper anymore. Now that we're all here, how about a story? Dad asks. Then he starts the way he always starts. When I was a little boy down on the farm, after the story, com after the story comes songs. Daddy calls them serenades for sleeping sleepless nights. We sit around the table talking and singing and laughing just like that's what everybody does in the middle of the night. And when I finally start to yawn, I know for sure that everything's good, everything good that happens in my house happens in Mama's kitchen. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Have a great weekend.